interest in random. All right, okay. Um, I think that uh, a, a mathematician is, uh, always works on, on randomness. Um, because what mathematicians do is they try to search for patterns within the mess. Now, whatever that mess might be, whether it's like fluid dynamics and it's all to do with the weather and trying to predict what it's going to be like tomorrow and solving those sort of equations, or whether um, there's some uh, mathematicians back in the 1920s that did a lot of work with identifying random, uh, <laughs> I was going to say random patterns, <laughs> but that sounds a bit contradictory, doesn't it? But no, they, they, um, they, they devised techniques to uh, say whether some sequence of numbers or some ramble, jambling of numbers had some sort of pattern. Yeah? And what they were trying to do was identify um, disease spread. So they thought, well, gosh, if, if this disease seems to spread with a pattern, then we can trace it back to its source and we can hopefully cure it. But if there isn't any pattern, if it seems to be random, then we'd have to tackle it in a different way. And so they devised techniques to look at data and say, is this random or isn't it? And so I, I, uh, I really like the idea of randomness because in, in schools, children tend to get taught to find the pattern. You know, like the quote I gave at the start, there's always a pattern and we always try to find it. But I think it's quite nice to think, well, maybe it's just one big mess and <laughs> there isn't a pattern there. Yeah? Because so imagine if I start, go, if I go uh, uh, two, four, six, you would say eight, wouldn't you? But it, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be eight. Yes, it's just that's the start of some sort of pattern. But I might suddenly jump to twenty-seven or something. Yeah, because my pattern might sort of fluctuate up and down. Or something. I just have a, a quick question. I'm just wondering about the way most people pick the number three, is that something that you see all the time or is there something about the number three? <laughs> three, it's, a, it's an interesting number three, isn't it? It's an interesting number. Um, yeah, I didn't really want to say too much about the cards because that was sort of like a, a nice finish, I thought. And what I was trying to um, illustrate there was that uh, even things that, you know, because we think that that was some sort of random, yes? But I, I knew what was going to happen before I passed the paper round. Before I started, I knew what would happen. Sorry? Yeah, because I was, I was giving the vibes out to the group, the three, and I said, I said lots of threes into the audience. I? No, I didn't. That's, that's what Darren Brown would tell you. <laughs> No, no, it wasn't that, no. So there's, uh, there's a bit of mathematics here, uh, but there's a bit of magic here as well. Uh, uh, magicians call this a force. Uh, and so a force is that, uh, and I'll just, I'll just say this, I won't explain the force, but uh, magicians use a force when it doesn't matter what you do, the trick always works. So no matter what you picked, I would always be able to force the red card. And that's what magicians call the force. It's a guaranteed trick. And uh, Darren Brown uses this all the time. But it involves a lot of maths to do with the numbers. So if you'd picked a, a different number, I would have still been able to um, force a result. I don't want to give that away because it's fun, isn't it? It's quite nice. Everybody's sitting there puzzled about why is that, why is that work? So that's quite a nice sort of thing. Does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer why this works or why the floor works. or Like the floor, um, the floor one with the cards, um, it's a very sophisticated piece of maths. Um, so the, uh, the, the maths involved in the, the, the random walk through the cards you actually wouldn't study if you were studying mathematics until you were post-grad. So it's something called Markov chains. And it's a, it's a way of analyzing random walks through things. So it's a very sophisticated piece of mathematics. But if you look at it in a very simple way, again, I've sort of tweaked it slightly. 
So if you notice that I, I said, um, I, I reduced the path lengths. So, oh, where's a picture card? You know, notice I, I made the picture cards worth one. Yeah, did you notice that? Yeah, if I hadn't have made the picture cards worth one, what would have happened? I won't bother Oof, finding one. Um, what would have happened is the average length, if you want to work out the average move of everybody, what you do is you'd add up all 52 cards, or the value of all the 52 cards, and you'd divide it by 52. And you'd get a certain average length of move. All right. If you, if you count the picture cards as 10, that average length of move is, say, this long. Yeah? If you count the picture cards as 1, the average length of move reduces. Magicians still don't like it because it's not guaranteed. I was lucky today. I, I, I kept my fingers crossed and uh, I was lucky. There's a few things I was lucky with. Uh, I was lucky with this as well. I'll explain that in a minute as well. So I just kept my fingers crossed there because it's probability, so it's chance. But I knew that the average length of move was reduced and so I knew I had a good chance that as people move through the cards, on average, they'd land on a card that somebody else landed on. Because imagine if their move is quite long, there's, there's quite a big chance they, they wouldn't hit the same card as they're walking through on that snaking path. But if I reduce their walk length down a bit, there's more chance they'd land on the same card. Magicians re reduce it even further. Usually they use a pack um, just from one to five, and they use like four packs or three packs of cards just using one to five to reduce the step length down even further to guarantee everybody will land on one place, yeah? Um, I used to do this trick, um, and I used to just do it with cards, and I, 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 I think it's a fantastic thing. Everybody lands at the same place, and they're all hugging each other. Uh, but I didn't get a wow effect when I just did it with normal little cards. So I sort of adapted it so that people walk through and then they give each other a big hug. And I, I always get a real wow factor when I do that. Uh, so sometimes I do that on the streets and I do a bit of busking with that sort of, uh, as Matt's busking things like we do for Matt's Week Island. Uh, and so you get that big effect there. But again, it's, it's, a, it's a likelihood everybody will land on the same card. But sometimes what happens is you, you get two cards at the end that people land on. But I was quite lucky in that case because when you were putting them down, uh, somebody put an ace, and then a picture card next to it, quite close to the end. So I thought, oh, that's good. Because <laughs> I knew that then there would be more chances of small steps at the end, and therefore I knew that there would be more likelihood that you'd land on the same card. But I didn't cheat now. <laughs> Honest. Um, with the, uh, again, this is a probability thing. And I'm particularly proud of this because this, um, there's, uh, this is my... Uh, own invention with a, um, a Japanese professor actually we, we put this idea together so uh, this was initially the idea for this particular bit of mathematics was first created by a man called Penny and he did it by flipping a coin and so he did like heads tails heads tails and he would maybe if you had three the choice would maybe be like head tail head and so he did the different possibilities of that occurring as you'd flip a coin uh, what myself and Yutaka did is we, we investigated the chance if you used a pack of cards. And what actually happens with a pack of cards is um, because you're repeating the event over and over again, if you've got a, say, a 60% chance of winning once, when you multiply that by two goes with the cards or three goes, your actual chance starts increasing that you would actually win more times. And we worked out that with a, with a pack of 52 cards, we move our chance of winning up into the 80s and 90s, depending on what the person picks. So the, the game's a bit like um, uh, scissors, stone, paper, yeah? Well, that's it, yeah, that's that sort of one, yeah. Uh, and so it's a bit like that, but when, when somebody picks something, I can always pick a much higher chance of winning one. The easiest one to see is if somebody was foolish enough to pick black, 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 I would pick, I would pick red, black, black. All right? 
And the reason I'd pick that is because if you imagine the only way they're going to win is if they get three blacks straight away. If they don't get three blacks straight away, once one red comes out the pack, I always win first. Because once one red comes out, before they get three blacks, I've already won. Yes? So that's the, the it's lovely if somebody picks three blacks, I love it. But um, again, I kept my fingers crossed again because I won very well there. I was only expecting to win maybe five out of the seven or eight. Usually you get about seven or eight uh, tricks. And on average, I should win about, about five and they should get maybe three. But I, um, I, I trounced you, didn't I, sort of? It was, uh, it was really good. So again, probability just flicked onto my side slightly. But it wasn't really to do with your choice. You picked a good choice. So your, your probability of yours uh, winning was about 30 odd percent, mine was 60. But again, because we played over several games, your probability dropped to about 10% and mine went up to about 90%. It's good. So you see something that, again, seems completely random, yet mathematics can show how, um, how it's not. So I think there's a lot of things like, sorry, I'm just waffling away. You're back again, sir. Anybody else like to ask a question after this gentleman? Hi, um, well, firstly, what is the most, um, very entertaining, but what is the most common mistake maths teachers are making given the approval ratings of mathematics? And secondly, are you allowed into casinos? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, gosh, yeah. Yes, I, I actually, uh, I know a few magicians, so I would, I would recommend not playing cards with people you don't know. That's the first thing. Okay. Yeah. I'd also uh, recommend that uh, when you see a real magician, don't believe a word he says, and believe um, just very little that you see. That's what I'd recommend. Uh, as far as education, I, I don't think um, I could really say much there. I think, I, think maths I think maths should be fun in classrooms. I, I don't think every, every child's going to think it's fun, but maybe if they get to the stage where they just think, oh, this is okay, I think that would be quite good. Um, I know when I, I, I've taught kids, I always try to have moments within the, the, the week that, that we do interesting and different things, um, and not just maybe just do a diet of sums. I think you have to do a lot of practice with maths to get good, but I think you also have to... Uh, do other things. I'm a great one for taking kids outside, doing things in the hall, doing things in the playground, taking them on school trips, math school trips. They're good. So doing things like that, you see, I, I think that's very important for children. So, uh, yeah, we should do more of that. Does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, just here. Yeah. Hiya, yeah, I was just wondering, you know how um, most of your tricks and things are based on probability? And slowly as you've done more and more shows, has it happened yet that like every single trick you've done has gone wrong? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm worried that the more you do your show, eventually you're going to have one day where everything is going to Yeah, I suppose that could happen. Um, well, this is, this, is my, this is my randomness show. So I do do other things. And so um, when I do, um, so this was just really a special for you this evening. Yeah, because I knew you were coming. So uh, I just did this, this special show here. So usually I do put in other things. Uh, that's why I, I hinted at the uh, number theory that I put on your table as well. So um, the surprising thing about pi, uh, as far as mathematicians are concerned, is that they, they don't know if it's random or if it's not. So mathematicians call um, things uh, that, are, that are random normal in the case of pi, and nobody's actually been able to prove if it's normal yet. Uh, the, there's a couple of brothers that uh, live out in America, and they spend a lot of time churning through numbers, and they've proved that the first 50 million digits are random, but they're not too sure about the rest. So there's still got a, a, there's still a little bit of work there. Um, pi is a very interesting number because um, Imagine on that list, you, the, the first surprising thing was the, the digits 0 to 9 all appearing there. And they appear too early statistically. Uh, the next thing is all those 9s. They're called the Feynman 9s because uh, Professor Richard Feynman uh, said that uh, when he, he, he memorized all the digits down to that point, and then he just went 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, so on. 
So it was his standard joke. But of course, um, somewhere in Pi, you'll find um, a thousand nines in a row. Yeah, you just expect to get that because everything, every finite thing that could happen will exist in Pi because Pi goes on forever. So that's quite surprising as well, isn't it? Uh, one thing I do with the kids is I try to get them to find their telephone number in those first few digits. Uh, Pi hunters love it. If their date of birth was in those first few digits, they put it on their business card. Pi hunters do. They just love that. Yeah, you might call them geeks, but, you know, it's everybody each to their own. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of people search, search for Pi digits. Um, People then sell the digits because uh, they use them in, in coding. You know, if you have a sequence of digits that nobody else knows, then you can use that. So, yeah, there's a lot of interesting maths that's come out of searching for pi numbers. And you've got to remember back in history, in the Bible, pi is quoted as three. And um, if, if, if pi was three, a circle would be a hexagon. So imagine you've got the uh, six sides, a uh, circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, so if it was a unit circle you'd have 6 and then you'd have the... So that's quite a, you know, so the history of pi has just gone through all sorts of evolutions until now that we know billions of digits. I think it was something on the radio recently, wasn't there? It was a really terrible story actually. Because Did anybody hear that, that somebody had found a, a, another digit of pi? Anybody hear that? <laughs> no? Because there's a fantastic formula um, that was invented in the 19, 1996, I think. And this formula is so amazing that um, you don't have to work out all the other 50 billion digits. Because all the formulas up to that time, they just worked out one and then worked out the next one and worked out the next And they'd run computers for like hours on end, yes, just working out the next digit. So some clever mathematician worked out a formula where they could just work out one digit. So if you wanted the zillionth digit, this formula would just tell you that one digit. So the story on the radio just it shows how geeky maths people are, doesn't it? The story on the radio said that this person had had their computer running for 23 days. And they'd worked out that the, I can't remember even which digit it was, but it was a very long way along. That digit was zero. Now imagine that's such a, a no story, isn't it, really? But they got, they got like three minutes of air time there. With the probability creeping into things like that so often, it must be difficult then to generate true random numbers, isn't it? Sorry to generate? Actually true random numbers. Yes, but there are different techniques to do that, to try and do that, because again, in statistics, uh, it's, it's quite useful to have random distributions. So there are various different ways of trying to get something that's pseudo-random, they call it. Yeah? Even your little pocket calculator, if you press the button, it'll have a random number generator, and so it'll generate some sort of randomness, but it's not that random. I think we'll uh, leave the questions there. The food has arrived. You know, probably Brilliant. Great from talking. Thank you so much, Steve. That was very interesting. If everybody can give you a round of applause.